Hi, uh, today I wanted to cover off adding a UPS um, to your NAS. Um, so I have a UPS, uh, mine's a, a network based UPS, but I'll show you the USB way as well. Um, and then I'll uh, simulate uh, cutting some power um, so that we can see what happens on the NAS with the settings that we choose. And the NAS I'm using today is the TVS-H1288X, but it really doesn't matter what NAS you're using, it's the exact same setup uh, for all NAS. So we'll go through the, uh, the main settings. So first here's the UPS I'm using, it's uh, an APC Smart UPS 2200. Um, and this is a uh, has a management card in it for the network, so I'm able to uh, send signals to shut devices down across the network. Um, it's important to make sure that the network switch would also be plugged into the UPS. Um, if the network switch gets turned off when power fails, uh, the UPS won't be able to send the signal across the network to instruct the NAS to turn off. So as a bare minimum, you should at least have um, the UPS with the switch and the NAS plugged in and anything else in between them um, that would prevent a signal getting between them. Um, so on this particular device if I come across the administration section the only thing I've done is I've enabled SNMP access. Um, I enable both um, SNMP v1 and SNMP v3 on mine which is the simple network management protocol. If you're using a USB one you don't have to do any of this but this is my unit and it's on 10.10.0.2. So the first step is to come to the NAS um, and add the UPS to let it know that there's one connected. Um, so here in the control panel, um, a lot of people look in the power option, but it's not there. We actually have it in the external device option right below it. Um, so in external device, the first screen you get is UPS. And by default, it's on the USB connection and is just not connected because it's, it's not plugged in. Um, if you did have the UPS plugged in on a USB connection, um, you would already see some information down here at the bottom um, about your UPS. So how how much batteries left, uh, who made it, that type of thing. Um, and you can simply select uh, what happens uh, when the power fails. Because mine's a network one, I'm going to choose the next one along, which is the um, SNMP connection. So I'm going to click that. Um, I can see that I've got uh, the IP address already typed in from when I set it up earlier, but I'm going to enable it again so that it's on there. Um, and I've got mine set to turn off the server if the power has failed for 10 minutes. So when I click apply, the area at the bottom here should populate with some information about my UPS. So we see it there now. Um, so everything says it's normal, um, everything, no problem, I have power. Um, one of the things I have done is I have added some information into my notification center. Um, so inside notification center here, if I uh, go to the uh, different system rule notifications I've got, um, down here at the bottom I do have a rule for the UPS um, to let me know if there's any changes on the UPS settings. Um, so I've already just had a few emails effectively telling me I've changed some information on the NAS. Um, I've got a, 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 a something connected um, now to it. So here's what that looks like. So TVS H1288X telling me that I've got um, um, settings changed in my UPS settings. So uh, what we'll do is we'll go through and we'll simulate a power failure on the NAS itself. So um, I've got a little uh, Wi-Fi adapter plugged into into my setup here so I can turn the power off um, on the device. Um, so I've turned that off just now. So we should see some information updating here um, and I'm likely to get some emails coming through as well um, letting me know that the power has failed simply because I've set those notifications up. Uh, please note the emails will only come through um, so long as the power didn't knock out your internet connectivity as well at the same time. Um, so now we can see some information that the UPS is abnormal, um, battery capacity is dropping. Um, so now there's a, a 10 minute timer effectively has been set. Um, if 10 minutes goes past and the power still has not come back, um, the NAS is going to turn off because that's what I've set up here at the top option here. And that would be the same if you were setting it up on the USB option as well. You get the exact same settings on that as well. If we come and look at the UPS and go to the uh, settings here, we can see power failure. So it's on battery power. So it's just protecting everything, keeping everything going. Um, so we can come here, see everything's okay. If I open up my email, I can see I have got an email now uh, telling me warning, um, detected UPS power loss shutting down NAS in 10 minutes, which is exactly what I said it to do. Um, so that's effectively everything that's happening there. 
Um, so I'm just going to turn the power back on. Um, again, the NAS should know um, that power's been restored. The UPS will tell the NAS that the power's come back. So there we go. It says normal. Um, and I'm also getting emails telling me um, that I've had the power restored and everything's good and that the uh, um, countdown has effectively been cancelled. So I'll pull that in here for you. So we can see here that the uh, warning here, UPS power restored, cancelled the shutdown. So that shutdown timer of 10 minutes has been stopped. NAS is going to keep on running. Absolutely no problem with that one. Now to try and find out what UPS works uh, with your NAS, um, it's a complicated one. We do have a compatibility list section for every NAS, so you can go through on our compatibility list and select NAS, which NAS you have, um, and then pick the category of UPS. It will normally default to the hard drive option, but we do have a UPS option. Uh, and we do have some filters here that let you pick between them. Uh, one thing I will show you is if I select the APC, the one I'm using, uh, my one is not on that list. Um, but what I did want to say is we do most of the testing for uh, a lot of the equipment on our compatibility list in Taiwan. Uh, they use a different power system than we do here in the UK. So largely the models that are on sale here in the UK would not be suitable to be tested um, on the power system that they have in Taiwan. So um, we're not likely to see the units available here. Um, but the good news is that most manufacturers use one system for all the shutdown language, all the communication between the UPS and the computer or device that it's being told to shut down. Um, they don't change it for every single device they make. So usually if you can find the brand um, that you're interested in, um, then you can pick really anyone from that brand. Um, just make sure it's either got the USB or network connection that you're looking for. Um, the USB ones are good if you have um, one device to turn off um, in, to keep safe, like a NAS. Um, the network one is great if you have multiple devices that you want to turn off. So I often have quite a few NAS, so I've got a few NAS linked to mine. Um, so I tell all my NAS to turn off after 10 minutes if there's power failure, and that keeps things like my routers and my switches and my Wi-Fi uh, powered up instead uh, for a bit longer because they use a lot less power. Um, so the compatibility list may not have the exact model that you're looking for, um, but it will have the brand. And typically, um, for example, Cyber Power, APC, um, there's a lot of different ones on there. Uh, they will all use the same protocol. So if one of them works, they will usually all work. Um, I can't guarantee it, so that's the only complication, um, but I've yet to find a UPS that I've tried that didn't work, even if the manufacturer wasn't on this list. Um, they all use a fairly standard protocol, so most of them work just fine, um, especially the network ones. It just uses SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol, um, fairly universal between the different manufacturers there. Um, so that's uh, adding a UPS uh, to, to a NAS. Um, one other thing to point out is you do see it here at the top of the NAS as well. So we will see connected external devices. Um, so if I was uh, just at sort of my home screen on my NAS here, um, this connected external device pops up and you can click it and it brings you straight to the information about your UPS and you can see um, all the information about it right there. Um, so that's connecting a, a UPS uh, to a QNAP NAS. Um, again, it's very simple to do, um, especially with the network ones. USB ones, plug it straight in. Um, you've got two options to select, whether it goes to auto protection mode or AC power failure um, mode. So you, two different options. Set the timers to really anything you want in minutes, um, and it will take care of the rest. Um, just make sure that you set a time that's shorter than the length of time that your UPS will stay powered on. If your UPS will only give you 10 minutes of power, there's no sense asking um, the NAS to turn off after 15 minutes because it's, it's just going to go off as soon as the UPS loses battery power. Okay, um, so that's uh, really everything I wanted to cover there um, on UPS working with the NAS. Um, if anyone has any questions, please do ask them in the comments section down below and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot for watching. Thank you. Bye.